Hi, we will now transition to discussing multimedia applications at LinkedIn. The applications were introduced at the beginning, but we will reintroduce them here. Furthermore, we'll briefly discuss infrastructure around multimedia at LinkedIn, along with deep dives on each application. So we'll first start with reintroducing uh, the multimedia application seen before. So LinkedIn has a variety of content you can see on the feed, including articles, images, videos, jobs, and ads. And ad creatives can furthermore uh, be broken down into videos or images. Furthermore, the LinkedIn learning platform has videos as well. In order to promote relative content to members, we want to incorporate multimedia content features in the recommendation systems for these applications. Alongside recommendation, we also want to use text features relating to multimedia in order to better retrieve content for user queries. Finally, we want to be able to identify spam and low quality images and videos on the site to maintain good user experience. We will now discuss infrastructure surrounding multimedia systems at LinkedIn. So there are a large number of uh, individual artifacts related to, these, to this content. These include images, individual video frames sampled at one frame per second uh, for offline processing, and speech to text video transcripts. Furthermore, the scale related to the large number of organic videos and images and videos uploaded every day serves as a challenge. Furthermore, a significant portion of this type of content is shown to members on the site or app. There are different types of processing modes. Offline processing is predominantly used to generate data sets for model training along with model training itself. This includes a daily ETL of image and video data to HDFS to enable modeling. Frames themselves are sampled at one frame per second for this purpose. Offline pipelines are not just limited to model training, however, we can also leverage them to generate features on a daily or weekly cadence to, to be used in online systems. However, this comes at a cost of quick feature availability uh, since these are scheduled like either daily or weekly. For this reason, nearline processing systems are used to provide features quickly via asynchronous processes that can generate features whenever a user uploads a new content. An example of this uh, is image captions and image object character recognition or OCR detection. Online processing involves processing image data direct, uh, directly during inference time. This involves tight SLA, so are not current, so we, we do not currently support them. Another example is feature retrieval. This again has tight latency SLA. To alleviate this, what we do is we feature we, we process these features offline and push them to online stores. This also puts practical limits on the size of the features involved. Thus, for multimedia features and modeling, we need to think around these three modes, offline, nearline, and online processing. We'll show examples of two types of pipelines. One involves featureizing videos using an offline flow. The second is a nearline flow to generate text image captions. For video featureization, we start when a member uploads a new video. The video is stored in the Ambry storage system, which is open source by LinkedIn. Embry is optimized to store and serve media content. Now on a daily basis, there's a one frame per second video frame ETL process that writes to HDFS, which enables Spark or TensorFlow flows to operate on the data. Alongside with the feature flow, once a video is uploaded, it can then be shown on the LinkedIn feed. Actions on these videos by other members are stored on HDFS. We have daily Spark workflows to compute watch related features related to these actions and push them to a feature store. So these can be, for example, like aggregate actions on certain videos uh, or, on, or for certain members on videos. Now an example of a nearline processing system is image captioning. Upon an image upload, we want to asynchronously generate an image caption using either uh, Microsoft API or a custom TensorFlow uh, captioning model, which has already been trained. When a new image is uploaded and stored in Ambry, a Kafka event is fired to signal the image has been uploaded. A SAMSA processor then reads this Kafka topic and initiates a download to retrieve the image content. Once it has retrieved this image content, it'll either invoke the uh, Microsoft captioning API and or it'll run the TensorFlow inference using a custom model. 
So once this is done, a text caption will be generated for this uploaded image. And also a, another uh, model called the meta classifier is used to quality, uses quality control on this caption. If the meta classifier deems this uh, caption worthy to be shown, then, this, uh, then a Kafka topic will be fired containing the caption, which can be consumed by any uh, consumers of this Kafka topic. So finally, this Kafka topic will also be ETL to HDFS, so we can process these captions offline as well. To summarize, multimedia is a significant portion of LinkedIn content. We want to leverage multimedia features for applications. Finally, the infrastructure used involves offline, nearline, and, on, uh, and online components. Great, so now we'll transition to discussing video search specifically. So the problem statement with video search is we want to provide relevant videos for whenever a user types in a query to the LinkedIn content search page. And so the, these, the results that surface up on the, on the search page can, uh, are any sort of content published in LinkedIn um, by users. So these can include articles or they can be text posts or they can be uh, image or video posts. So here it's like, it's more so the question of promoting like uh, relevant videos. And the way we want to do that, it actually leverage the rich like video transcripts we have for these videos. So again, like as discussed in the theory section, like uh, we discussed different sorts of speech to text transcription methods uh, and that generate textual transcripts. And here is, is now an information retrieval task where we want to index these transcripts for better retrieval on the search page. So this just shows an anatomy of a, of a search result and what it can look like. So at the top, you'll see a search query. And here it's, it's typed in as AGI, an abbreviation for this artificial general intelligence term, which is found in something we call the commentary text uh, of, of the post that we see here, of the search result. However, the, like, so because it's not an exact match with the query or, or a relative match with the query, uh, that is not the reason this specific result is being surfaced. Instead, if we look at the video content that's part of this post, part of the transcript of this video is uh, Satya Nadella talking about AGI, uh, where he explicitly mentions it. So when, this, when the speech to trust transcriber returned the transcript for this, it contained the term AGI itself, which is why when, uh, we, when we index the transcript in our search index, uh, it is surfaced for this query. We will now look at the indexing system design for video transcripts. A user can post a video onto the site or a mobile app by either recording one or uploading a pre-recorded video. Once uploaded, we will compute the video transcripts by calling the video indexer API from Microsoft. This transcript is then indexed with two parallel workflows. One is the base index build, which takes the generated string transcript in an offline Hadoop workflow and stores it in the forward and inverted search index. Another is a live updater flow, which is a near line process meant to have the transcript in the index much quicker than a scheduled offline pipeline. This live, this live updater functions by listening to a Kafka topic containing the transcript data and then storing it in the forward and inverted index. These two workflows provide redundancy in case of any errors and for updates to any content. The whole system again is orthogonal to other indexing systems for search content. For example, like tra tra transcript text is used in addition to commentary text, title, author, and so on. Commentary text here means the surrounding text uh, that, a that a user can type in before uploading a post. So in terms of metric impact on the content search page itself, uh, we see increases in time watched for videos and three second plays. Results seen at one is a recall metric which shows results being displayed that weren't there before. Now there is a trade-off to retrieving more content as precision can be harmed. So to offset this, we also ramped a, a trained search model to improve precision of updates shown. Uh, 